Yeah, I think I think we might as well make a start and then hopefully people can join us uh, throughout the session as, as we go as well. Um, so thank you everybody for, for joining us today. Uh, this is from the University of Birmingham uh, and the Birmingham Law School more specifically. Uh, the session, we've got a very exciting session for you today all around the student experience at Birmingham Law School here at the University of Birmingham. We've got some, some really exciting guests to introduce to you. We'll do full introductions later on in the session, uh, but very, very glad to be joined by Naya Aaron Summerat, who are students and alumni from the University of Birmingham, and Mr. Carl Adaway as well, uh, who's a regional manager. So we'll, we'll introduce them more as we go through the session. Um, but what we're planning to do today is to give you a bit of an insight into life at the University of Birmingham, specifically the Birmingham Law School, and then also um, give you the opportunity to ask any questions or any thoughts you might have uh, to our panel of students uh, about life here in Birmingham. So just to, to kick off with, I'm just going to share a few slides with you, um, just so to get, just to give you a bit of an insight into to life uh, at Birmingham. So the law school itself uh, is a, a very well well ranked university. Uh, we're a top 100 law school uh, in the world as part of the QS World Rankings, uh, with a really long and illustrious history of teaching uh, law uh, in on campus as well. So over 100 years history of, of teaching and, and shaping. Uh, legal education around the world. Uh, a, a hugely diverse and exciting teaching staff. We have over 80 academics who work within the law school from all backgrounds uh, and all professions sharing different insights and experiences into the teaching as well, which really links into uh, the excellence in teaching that we have here at Birmingham. We're, we're ranked as a, a TEF gold institution, which means it's the highest level as ranked by the UK government for our quality of teaching. And that's also reflected in the research where at the last REF uh, framework, which is a, a, an evaluation of research excellence, uh, the University of Birmingham and the Law School specifically uh, was in 94% of its research was ranked as internationally recognized. So a really great uh, and exciting place to be. And in terms of our community, we have a very internationally focused law school uh, with around 30% of all our students uh, coming from over 70 different countries. So uh, a really exciting place to be. And hopefully you'll hear a little bit about some of the graduate prospects and the opportunities that we have uh, from here as well. Just a little overview of the campus itself. As you can see, a very green campus. We're based about seven minutes on the train outside of the city of Birmingham, which is the second city in the UK. So the second largest city in the UK. So loads of great opportunities, uh, both for, for following your graduation, but also during your time here, a really exciting and vibrant city to be a part of. You'll be able to see on this image the clock tower, which is Old Joe, uh, right in the centre of campus, and the law school itself is located just underneath that. So the law school really is in the, in the very heart of the campus. Um, so a really exciting and dynamic place to be. You can see all the facilities there, and I'm sure some of our students will talk about that as well uh, when we get to there. So just very briefly, some of the, the opportunities that we have, uh, the main one being the, the undergraduate law course, which is our most popular uh, programme in the law school. So we have the three year LLB, which is of course a qualifying law degree, which can um, enable you to practice law in the UK uh, and also back, back in India as well. And we also have the two year LLB for graduates program, which is more focused towards students looking to practice in the UK at an accelerated pace. But we can answer any questions about that uh, as they come through. You'll see we've got different variations of the LLB as well. All of those are qualifying law degrees, but have a slight different sense uh, and a focus on them. So things like business criminology and international law and globalization are all qualifying degrees, but have a slight different focus. We have a lot of postgraduate opportunities as well, and this is growing more and more. So we have a full-time Birmingham LLM program, uh, which is split into a range of different pathways, depending on your specialism and interest. Uh, we also have a brand new opportunity in Dubai at our campus in Dubai, which is an international commercial law program as well. So that's a really exciting growing program, which we're recruiting to now as well. We also offer a new energy and environment law program, which is a distance learning course. So done online, um, a really exciting program that again is growing and has, has only been in existence for the last two years. So loads of great opportunities there. And also, of course, we have a research side, which is our law PhD and PhD by distance learning opportunities as well. We have done some sessions already with Law SICO around these topics. And in the coming weeks, we actually have a couple more sessions on postgraduate law as well. So if any of these opportunities do sound of interest, it's definitely well worth keeping your eye out for those coming up. 
Also, just to highlight, we have something at Birmingham which we're very proud of, which is called Kepler. It's the Centre for Professional Legal Education and Research. It's really our hub for all the employability and extracurricular activities that ensure our students are as employable and future ready as possible. So you can see here it's split up into things such as careers, pro bono, advocacy work and, and teaching. So Kepler really spans across the whole curriculum here at Birmingham and it's probably something we'll pick up again in a couple of the questions. Um, but we really focus on making sure that our students have a wealth of opportunities to take advantage of to make sure that they have the well-rounded experience you need to, to succeed in the legal profession. The two pictures I've just got on the side there are one of them, up for, uh, the top one is from Birmingham Law in the City, which took place in 2019, because unfortunately we couldn't run it this year, but it's an opportunity where law firms in Birmingham open up their head offices and we take a team of students around and they get to experience life in the law firms in the city of Birmingham as well. And then the session below that was at our International Careers Conference where we hosted it in tandem with University of Leeds and we invited loads of extracurricular and external speakers to come in and explain a bit about what it's like to get work experience and to work fully in different markets around the world. So loads of great opportunities there. The next thing I'll just quickly touch on before I hand over to my colleague Carl is just around Birmingham's role in India as a country as well. So we actually have something called the India Institute in the University of Birmingham, which is an opportunity to unite Birmingham and India closer together through partnerships, research and opportunities. Here at the law school, we've got an increasingly growing Indian community and also in the city of Birmingham, it's an incredibly large Indian population who live and work in the city. As a, as a law school, we are approved by the Bar Council in India to deliver legal education. So our courses are recognized there as well which is a real great opportunity for us. And I think it's worth saying that over the last five years, we've seen a great growth in the partnerships, and this is what we're continually trying to grow and build these opportunities for us. So now I'm just gonna hand over to my colleague, Carl, who's gonna explain a little bit about some of the stuff we do. Thanks very much, Ben. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Carl Adaway, and I'm one of the regional managers at the University of Birmingham. So I look after South Asia, which is one of my primary region, regions, along with the Americas and Sub-Saharan Africa as well. So I'm very excited to be here and, and uh, just thank you to, to Ben and the Law School for inviting me. I actually work as part of the Central International Recruitment Team uh, and we have various different offices around the world and we also have an office in India as well. So our India office is actually based in Delhi. Um, it's actually part of the, um, the Taj Mahal uh, complex of, of hotels there. Um, so we're actually based there in Taj Man Singh um, Hotel is actually what it's called. And we're also just about to have a new representative join us and they'll be based in Chennai. So we'll have coverage in the north of India and the south of India as well. Um, and both of those offices will actually cover everything in between. I'll talk a little bit about the contacts uh, there later. So um, as Ben was mentioning there, the India Institute, they're also based within the India office at the Taj Mahal Singh Hotel in Delhi. And that's primarily where they, uh, they are, are situated. But with my specific team, we're involved very much in direct recruitment. So we do that in a variety of different ways. So we'll visit various different schools, we'll visit various universities, but we'll also use agents as well. So we have a network of agents throughout uh, India that can support you uh, with your um, application process or with your visas. Uh, and all of those agents are very much, um, we actually review them very, very, very closely to make sure that they are actually working professionally, uh, but also that they're providing a free service to all uh, of our applicants who want to apply for any of our programs across the university. Uh, and that's not just in the UK, that's also with our Dubai campus as well, because our India office not only supports recruitment for the UK, but they also support recruitment for Dubai as well. Um, now, all of our agents, you'll be able to find that detail if you look at the bottom of that slide there at birmingham.ac.uk forward slash India, that will actually take you to our India pages. On there, you'll find all of our entry requirements and you'll also find links to all of the agents that we actually have uh, that are registered to represent the University of Birmingham in India. 
Um, and like I said, we play very close, close attention to actually ensuring that those particular agents are well trained in everything to do with our university. I mentioned the India Institute briefly there. It's primarily um, involved in research and partnerships. A lot of the research we're doing at the moment with uh, various different Indian institutions, including the University of Delhi, are things like um, work on air pollution that we're doing at the moment. Uh, women's cancer is another area that we're looking at. Um, cold fusion uh, and storage to be able to move food products from one part of the country to another safely. Um, so these are various different types of research topics that we're doing. We're also uh, very heavily involved in the Sports Council of India as well. So we're working with the Sports Council and the University of Birmingham is very much a big sports university as well. So I'm sure you may, may find a little bit about that later. So there's lots of different areas where we're working right now. Um, and in terms of the contacts that you'll, you, you may actually get in, in touch with is myself as regional manager based in the UK. There's my colleague, Mr. Dipanka Chakraborty, who's actually the director of the Inda Institute. He's actually based in Delhi itself. And there's also Ms. Nidhi Manocha, and she's the country manager based in Delhi. Um, the new person in Chennai won't be starting with us till the beginning of March. Um, but they'll be there to support us as well in the south of India. Now, to get in touch with any of us, you can email us at the bottom of the screen there. You've got southasia at contacts.bham.ac.uk. If you want any specific information just about the university itself, about what it can offer, feel free to contact us and reach out to us and we can speak to you a little bit more detail at a later stage. I've also put a link there to the birmingham.ac.uk forward slash India Institute, just in case you wanted to find out a little bit more about the research that's taking place at the moment uh, between various different um, partners that we have across India. Uh, and one thing that's not on this slide, but I did want to quickly mention it. Um, and I'm not sure if you're going to be mentioning this throughout the session, Ben. So forgive me if I'm stealing your thunder. Um, but that's just to mention that the University of Birmingham is one of the hosts of the Commonwealth Games in 2022. Um, and Birmingham as a city is very proud to be able to host the Commonwealth Games. Uh, and in honour of that, the Commonwealth Games, we've created some scholarships available as well. Now, they're going to be announced very, very soon. Um, but basically, if you keep an eye on that birmingham.ac.uk India page and look at scholarships, there'll be some very good scholarships for all of our Indian scholars at postgrad level who want to actually come and study with us. So please keep an eye out for that moving forward. Thank you. Thanks for that, Carl. Um, really appreciate you doing the, the quick plug of the Commonwealth Games there. Definitely something we're very excited to be involved in. And we'll be sharing a full list of all the scholarships we have um, later on in the session as well. Um, now, the main point of this session is obviously to hear from our current uh, students and our, and our alumni as well. So without taking up any more time, really keen to get you to meet our students. So I'm now going to hand over to, to our panel who are going to briefly introduce themselves and then we'll open up the session to questions as well. Um, so Aaron, do you want to kick us off with a quick introduction? Sure. Hi everyone, my name is Aaron. I am a final year student uh, in the LLB programme. I'm currently at, in Birmingham. Uh, I'm originally from Have we, have we lost Aaron? Mumbai, India, but I've lived around India quite a lot. Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. The, the internet connection sorry, can get a bit unstable. But, um, I think I was, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I think the internet connection got a little bit unstable. But um, one, I just want to talk about why I chose University of Birmingham. And one of the reasons was it really ticked off a lot of the boxes for me being uh, that of a university with legacy along with a university uh, at one of the highest levels for uh, the, its teaching in law. University of Birmingham is ranked quite highly amongst um, a lot of the universities in the UK with regards to its, to its teaching in law. And I really experienced that in my years here. And um, you get this sort of touch with the, uh, with the staff and with the cohort that you usually wouldn't get in other places. And it's one of the reasons I really value this place as a place for legal education. That's what I feel. Thanks, Aaron. That's a great introduction. Thanks very much for that. 
Uh, Sumarat, we'll come to you next. If you just want to briefly introduce yourself. Yeah. The world has changed a lot and is changing again. It's tempting to ask when things are going to get back to normal, but the fact is they are not going to, not the old normal ways. Happy to meet you all. My name is Sumirat. I'm originally from India, but specifically I am from Royal City of Punjab, Patiala. I am a second year law LLB student in this prestigious university. I have been one of the six law school ambassadors supporting minority communities since 2019. I'm also in charge of mentoring first year law students. Before coming to United Kingdom, I was studying computer science and engineering at TU Delft, Netherlands, but the things were not the way I expected. So I dropped out within a year. And in that particular phase, I learned a very important life lesson that life doesn't give you what you want. It doesn't mean that we don't deserve it. We deserve so much more. So having exposure of different universities. Uh, so I have myself learned and experienced that being a foreign student and specifically Indian student, it's not always easy to settle either in Europe or United Kingdom because of our cultural differences and the change or the shift in the education system. And the one thing that I learned in uh, TU Delft Netherlands was the power of law, that how you can, how it can help you and make your life fearless. So on that day, I learned that if I could pursue or shift my technological mindset to the field of law, my life could become fearless and I could adjust myself in any of the field that I wish I should go. And I think that you are going to have a lot of questions in mind that you are really excited to hear. So get ready now. We all are about to share all the details that you need. And now I'll hand over to uh, uh, panel two, our, the third member who's going to share her experience with all of you. Thanks, Samara. That's a great, great introduction there. Uh, Naya, finally, over to you. Uh, am I audible, Ben? Okay. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, um, first of all, for inviting me here. And I'm so excited to meet everybody and share my experiences. I'm Neha. Um, I am from India, specifically from Bihar. I just finished my uh, LLM from University of Birmingham uh, with a distinction, <laughs> surprisingly. Um, and uh, um, I uh, about... I mean, uh, I have, I think as Sumirat said, um, I also belong to a uh, science background up till my high school. It was after my high school that I shifted to law and uh, I did my undergrad from University of Petroleum and Energy Studies in Dehradun. Uh, it was a BLLB course with specialization in energy laws. And after my uh, graduation in 2019, um, I, before my graduation, actually, I started looking for opportunities to do LLM abroad. And uh, while researching for different universities, so uh, uh, while I was doing my bachelor's, I had grown my, uh, uh, my interest in human rights law and criminal law. And uh, while I was researching for universities, I came across this uh, program that the University of Birmingham offers, which is international law with crime, uh, crime justice and human rights. And that was when I was like, this, this ticks off everything that I want to learn. So uh, that's when University of Birmingham sort of became my dream, dream university. And when I got an offer, it, it was, it was um, uh, I mean, amazing. And uh, my one year just just went by like that. It was, uh, I mean, till the time we could uh, access the campus, it was wonderful. And after that, unfortunately, because of the pandemic, we we, cannot, we could not uh, access the campus completely, but nonetheless, it was a wonderful experience. And looking forward to answering all your questions that you have. Thank you. Thanks, Naya, that's really great. And also she, she's underselling herself. She was also one of our prestigious Harding Scholarship uh, Awardees. <laughs> It's got a, a, an excellent <laughs> on our website and somebody we're very proud uh, to be connected with. Um, so that's our wonderful panel who are here to, to answer questions on the student experience. Um, Shrinkala, I think you're going to, to take over and, and, and facilitate this session. Yes, uh, thank you for your introduction. So we have a few, we already have questions coming in from all the attendees. Anyone who has any questions, you can just uh, you know write on the chat. We do have a few questions that we received earlier. So first, uh, what was your, you know, first impression of the University of Birmingham? Anyone can start. Neha, you can start. Am I audible? 
uh, first impression as in after after uh, being on campus or before like while i was researching when you were on campus uh, shrinkla your voice is breaking a bit or i don't know if it's my internet connection hello am i audible is it better now yes i, I think so from carl i think i can i can hear now i think it might be your connection potentially um but i think the question was your first experience of of being on campus uh, how how did that feel <laughs> oh the campus is beautiful oh my god <laughs> so it it's huge and it's green and, and 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 there are old buildings and there are some newly constructed buildings and i loved the library the library was my favorite place to visit it's so resourceful and um uh my law building uh i mean uh, it, it was just surreal first of all i couldn't believe i was there um and um, secondly it, it was it was peaceful with uh, uh, all the students uh, i think it i i had gone before uh, I, a week before my uh, course was about to start so uh, i i just saw that like everybody was uh uh sort of running for the classes or just chilling uh, uh on the grasses or whatever it, it was a very uh wholesome nice feeling to be on campus and the pictures you know depict exactly that because they are so beautiful yeah i know <laughs> so sumirat do you want to share your experience yeah absolutely as like neha said that pretty yeah the first impression like pretty good was like of a really great but since i was lucky enough to visit some of the best universities in the europe so when i first landed in the university of birmingham i felt the royal vibes of my hometown seeing the architecture and my heart said that this time the money my parents are sacrificing will be worth it the only thing i was missing on the, my first day was the dug dug of my royal enfield bullet which would have added life into my days since like if you see like most of the punjabi students that come have that kind of feeling because we are so passionate for our first days of our new chapters of life but however in that year like uh, brexit was a kind of mysterious subject in india and everyone in my family used to say i am about to play a big gamble that would soon make all of us bankrupt well nothing like that happened with the grace of god and all i can say is that it was the amazing first vibes of the university and the speech given by the vice chancellor sir on our the day one that motivated me that no matter what happens to indian students after graduating in uk after brexit i will fight with my destiny and will make most of my university life it has been more than 2 years and i have no regrets so far but i still feel that the first vibes that i got are still within me that is motivating me every day and that's why i think albert einstein was right to say there are only two ways to live your life one is as if nothing is a miracle the other is as everything is a miracle so i feel that everybody who will be like first steps into university of being birmingham should definitely try to enjoy every each and every moment of their life because miracles happen every day oh well, that's a really different way to look at it aaron would you like to share your experience yeah certainly i think um the vibes are certainly as sumrat said was very nice um i felt the vibes immediately when i saw the red brick and i saw old joe the tallest peach tiny clock tower in the world it's taller than big ben and that's something you will hear a lot from a lot of this year the university students because that's a, one of the big landmarks that we have um but for me what was very important was i wanted a place where you had a lot of activity you had a lot of interaction and i found that harding library which is in the law building is was one of the best places for me to study and i i used to go there almost every day with my friends and we used to study together and interact together and have that sort of thing and i think that sort of vibe so to speak of the university where you know everyone would be on the green heart which is a huge piece of grass that we have during the summer time and everything being close together and um that sort of interaction that was fostered through the architecture of the university and the way the university is set up was something i really liked and seeing that on the first day seeing a ton of people coming together interacting talking to new people that was something that really excited me and that was what i felt on the first day nice wow that's so that's amazing so uh, you know we have a current student he's in second year you are in fifth year neha is an alumni 
so tell me you know one highlight of studying in university in the university like you know you, because you've all had different journeys till now so yeah it's so neha you can start anyone i'm sorry i missed your question my connection went off again okay <laughs> maybe you know if uh, you can switch off the video then you'll be able to hear the audio better yeah 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 i'll do that so i was just saying you know uh, that you are you are an uh, alumni so mirat is in the second year aaron is in the fifth year so tell me one highlight of the university you know studying there what was that one thing that struck you that that was different for you um so my mine was a masters program right and um uh, it was basically seminar based so we didn't really have lectures we had seminars and um um so we we were a small group of uh, in a class there used to be like 18 20 not more than 18 20 people a small group of people and uh, we were given reading materials one week prior to our seminars and we had to read them and be prepared and then come for discussions in the seminar and the the enthusiasm the passion with which everybody uh, who was a part of that course uh they came prepared to the seminar it was wonderful you know and even even the professors for that matter i mean they they do they don't just teach for the sake of teaching they're actually quite passionate about their subject whatever they teach whatever their area of interest is so that's something which which always motivates you to you know do your best and 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 give your best and and uh, that 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 was that for me was was the highlight um uh, to answer your question shrinkla Okay, uh, Sumira, do you want to share your uh, highlight? Yeah, basically, yeah, basically the first thing that I noticed was that, like in my previous university, I had nine hundred students in one class uh, in Netherlands. So when I came in my law school and observed only three hundred students, I really enjoyed on seeing such a small crowd. And when professor during the lecture told that you will be having small seminar groups, each comprising five to seven students, then I felt happy that yeah, now this is gonna be. pretty much enjoyment so during my first year i since i was the law was completely new for me i just uh, had the experience of the power of law but i learned some very crucial lessons like law is a career in which there is no place for ethics like that's whether the client is innocent or guilty it's never a matter for the lawyers their job is just to represent and protect them irrespective of their criminal obligations so 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 that day i realized that no matter how innocent you are a wrong you are a wrong lawyer will screw things up so i made sure that i am learning all the basic skills properly so that i don't screw somebody's life and when i was young i used to believe that the uh, justice was true and the judge the decision was the final and correct but however now i have found in my second year that it is the responsibility of the lawyer to state the arguments properly a professional lawyer is going to get you out of the case even if you are guilty so this was the some highlights that i have gained so far in my like uh, during first years but also in my second year i have just realized that all the majority of the areas of the law are juggling in a such a way that either a uh, judgment will either make it an angel or a beast so i'm pretty much enjoying and uh, exploring that how the law gonna be like uh, treating us all of us in the new ways Yeah, Aaron, would you like to share? Sure. Uh, I have to echo what Sumrat and Neha said about um, the interaction with professors. Uh, that's what I've actually previously mentioned was um, the closeness that you get with professors is really unlike any other I've seen before in any of my other experiences. Uh, one of the things that you can do when you're in university is you can book appointments for office hours, which means you can spend a few minutes with a professor, with specialists in their field, the top range in their field, to just hit off questions understand the perspective and if, for example if you don't know a question if you don't know uh, why they have taken this perspective in the seminar first to say you can always hit them up in their in their office hours send them an email and get an understanding from the top levels in the field i think that's something that really hit me as being valuable in this university and that openness to be able to interact with people like that and uh, i had to also echo what sumrat said about judgments and about um the un understanding how the law worked i i myself did not have i came from a science background in high school like neha and um coming into the law it was a different experience for me and having to understand 
the rationality of the law, having to understand the onus upon the lawyer to uh, perform to the best of their abilities, to represent the client in the best way, and things like that. It was something, and, and the morality aspect of it, and something I learned from my future experience is that, um, you know, every individual deserves that basic amount of re legal representation, that basic amount. And that's something that's echoed uh, in the case that you understand, the case that you read, and also with the interactions that you have with the professors. And the, the, the absence of a right or wrong and more of a gray zone, that's something that you have learned from that interaction. So I say to the, the students who want to come to the university, interact with your professors, interact with your, with your seminar leaders. That's something that's so valuable. Yeah, that's what I feel. Wow, yeah. I think uh, interaction does help you, you know, know a place and the subject better and also increases your interest, I think. So yeah, that was about the, you know, your experience. Tell me something about the co extracurricular activities that you were involved in you know, while pursuing your degree. Uh, uh, and why don't you we start with you? Sure. Uh, I took part in a lot of uh, extracurricular activities. So um, I was part of so we have two uh, or three right now uh, law societies in the university. Uh, one, I'm currently involved with Holdsworth Law Society, which is the main law society of the university. Uh, I'm part of their BAME, uh, which is uh, their minority group uh, coordinator. So we represent minority groups and we interact with them. Uh, last year, I was involved with ELSA, which is the European Law Students Association. Um, and I was, uh, I, I was representing the cohort in that, in that aspect. And so that experience to be able, and this is something you'd have to put, you'd have to show in your CV in when you're going to talk to employers on your leadership positions, on your teamwork positions, and to be able to take part in these is a, is a significant part of your university experience. Uh, it's you have to do, you, you have to be able to demonstrate that sort of the the capabilities that the employers need, and to do that you have to take part in these extracurricular activities. So whilst academics is super important, you have to have a consideration for the extracurriculars. I was also involved in sports. I was part of the kickboxing club for the university. So the university and the Guild of Students has a number, a range of clubs that you can join towards through, through whatever liking that you like, whatever interest that you have. And there's a range of them. And so I would suggest to people who are coming in, join into your extracurricular activities, try your best to take up these leadership positions and um, make your university experience more fruitful. Okay, nice. Neha, do you want to share your experience? Um, yeah, actually, uh, unfortunately, um, A, because uh, mine was uh, the master's program, which was it in itself quite grilling for me personally. Um, and also because of some personal circumstances, I could not very much participate in extracurricular act activities. And any which way, I had like five, six months of time on campus after, after which the campus any which way closed. So um, unfortunately, I could not uh, very much take part in any extracurricular activities or, um, or such. But I, um, I mean, I did visit the Guild of Students uh, for, for various uh, services that they offer. Some like even um, like I had some legal uh, advice to seek from them, actually, because I was going through something and, and they were so helpful, so welcoming and so helpful. Um, uh, apart from that, on sports front, the sports and fitness building of our university, it's amazing. It's, it's something uh, which, which you, you'll just get, get mesmerized if you visit it. So uh, that, that's, that's on my part. Okay. Okay. Uh, Samira, do you want to add something? Yeah, like my list is also like complete big like Arhan, like basically like I was running for the law school ambassador in the 2019 autumn election. However, I didn't win, but I was defeated by just one vote. After that, I participated in the full time international officer position. Uh, I was able to, I stood, I came second, I was able to score 267 votes. And uh, on seeing that motivation, I was like, uh, I was offered a position of one of the six law school ambassadors, which I am continuously in, like currently doing that. And I participated in the virtual version of the Birmingham project in June 2019, which was powered by PwC. I also hosted the College of Arts and Law webinar for first year students in September 2020. And whenever there is some kind of volunteer work, the university knows who is the first person going to land with a yes in their inboxes. 
So at the beginning of the COVID-19, I wrote some motivational blogs for our law school's newsletter to raise the spirits. I uh, made some few short motivational videos to for the students to feel safe that they're gonna be coming to the university and the campus will be safe. And I motivated them to engage in the Birmingham project. I participated in the kickstart of the Just Be campaign, which held in the December. I was also selected as the equal winner of the question of the week contest powered by the College of Arts and Law. And I'm currently I'm working on behalf of the Anecta Society with my team on a project called Tech Heart. It's a project that recycles and fixes old technological products and distributes them to the most vulnerable students in the local Birmingham schools. We are trying our level best to remove the divide that has been formed because of the COVID. And recently, like uh, in the month of January, we had our university UOB's festival in which we had a virtual marathon race. I participated in it. I was able, to, like I came, turned out to be top 20 racers from our University of Birmingham. Like our College of Arts and Law also came second in whole of the marathon. And the and then in next month, there is a like competition called as Graduate of the Year Awards, which is powered by Rolls-Royce. So I will be participating in this competition in the coming months. So yes, as Aran said, that I will sounds also very, Yeah, that sounds very impressive. So, you know, I can see, the, you know, though academics is a very big part, but the university also offers, you know, uh, room to, you know, go for other activities as well for your wholesome development. That's amazing to hear. So, you know, like Neha is, uh, is an alumni, she's just completed, Aaron is in the fifth year. How has the university helped you, you know, with your future plans? Neha, would you like to start? Um, yeah, so um, while I was doing my master's, um, like I said, it was a very grilling course in itself. I had a lot of research to do, a lot of essays to write, and um, and um, I any which way wanted to go into teaching after I had finished my bachelor's, therefore I enrolled into master's. But after getting into master's, I uh, I got this realization that, uh, you know, this this researching, this uh, reading about new things and researching and, and, and uh, writing and uh, 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 forming a point of view and uh, disseminating that information, whether in written form or in a teaching form, I, I really love doing that. I love doing that. So doing masters actually sort of engraved into me uh, uh, the the thought that I think uh, academia is something that I I really really want to pursue as my career option. And and that's why like before the session started, I said that after this I'm I'm, I'm willing to pursue a PhD. Um, and uh, uh, during uh, my time in the University of Birmingham, the Co Career Network and Kepler also, so they, they also give um, uh, some sessions as in if you want to go further into PhD and you do not know where to start, what to start. So from a very basic level, they, they just guide you towards uh, uh, what to do, where to look for scholarships, where to look for fundings, uh, what area of interest, how to go about it. So yeah, the university has helped me a lot in that sense as well. Nice. Yeah, well, I remember you telling me that you were planning to pursue PhD. So yeah, it's like, yeah, nice. Uh, Aaron, would you like to add to it? Sure. Your um, I have to echo what Neha said about Kepler being, it's, it's one of the most amazing uh, uh, facets of being in the university. Uh, being in my third and final year, uh, the, the question always comes, oh, what's next? And, you know, uh, now I've only got about five months until graduation. So um, my my aim has always been to get into the, into the corporate field and, and get into um, commercial practice. Uh, but I think that the benefit of a legal degree is in its um, in, in the ability of it to be applicable anywhere. You can go into banking, you can go into consultancy, you can go into a number of fields with your legal degree. And the benefit be, uh, of being in the university and being able to use all these resources as Kepler, the advisory board, and in fact, even talking to your personal tutors and, uh, your, and your other tutors who you feel that uh, can have an influence in your career, it's you get the right advice on the next steps to take. And um, what also happens is some, you also have a provision where you have different lectures on uh, the next steps and on the next steps you can take and on how to do your psychometric testing 
for your applications, things as simple as that. So the university does provide a lot of resources for you to go into the world and to step out of the university bubble. And um, I've been taking full advantage of that. And at the moment, it, yeah, we have to consider, we also have to consider that the economy at the moment and the labor economy is in a different situation than it was a few years ago. But uh, the university has adapted well and it has done a lot of stuff that is really beneficial. Okay, thanks. So uh, I, I would like to ask, how is the city for the, for students, like how have you explored? How is it? So Mirat, why don't you tell us something about the city? Yeah, first of all, I'll say that uh, Birmingham has five universities, making it one of the largest hubs of higher education outside London. And it also means that it has a deep student community around the city. So one of the things that I love about Birmingham is that you can quickly fly to a lot of destinations, whether you want to go to London or some local destination. And however, if you want to fly to like to India or any other European countries, then it's like quite near for you. You don't have to travel like for two or three hours just to reach the airport, which I feel is makes the Birmingham one of the like good places. Plus, I think that like I'm like I have like experienced this thing more. Like when the first lockdown began, I was the only one who wasn't afraid of COVID-19 that much. And I was enjoying my life full by exploring Birmingham and all the surrounding cities. And I myself have traveled day and night, so I can honestly claim that Birmingham is the safest and the best destination for an Indian student in terms of everything. Like there is no problem of any food items that they feel that they are missing because everything is available here. And one of the best things that I like about Birmingham is that, however, like there are other towns, but this town has some special vibes. Maybe it's due to the university or the environment is making, but you just, def just as you just land in this country, you just start to enjoy each and every day as if you were like belong here and just uh, like you just now realize that uh, you have reached the exact destination where you belong. Okay, he's very, uh, he's completely, you know, excited for <laughs> the university here. Okay, and why don't you share your experience? How has uh, Birmingham treated you? Sure. Um, I have to echo some uh, claims that it is, it is, it is one a very welcoming place. It is, ha it has a very diverse population. So if you go around, you will see individuals from all parts of the world, different backgrounds and different, and as he said, there are different, there are a lot of students uh, and there, there, there's a huge student population within the place. But one thing I would like to echo is that Egbaston, the campus of Egbaston is actually separated from the main city part. So it's, I really valued that. So when I came to university, I wanted to have a very academic or sort of separate um, as form of education. I didn't want to be in the center of the city with all the distractions and everything going on. And so I really appreciated the fact that the campus of Egbaston is separate from the city in a way, it's less hustle and bustle. But if you want to get into the city, it's not that hard. It takes only like maybe 10 minutes to, to train and through bus to get to the city. And then you can enjoy the city in, in a different ways. The shopping center, such as the Bull Ring, is a very, very expansive shopping center with all the top brands that you can think of. You've got Broad Street with all, with all the clubs and pubs that you would you like to go to for nice. Obviously, right now, we can't do that. But once it opens again, I can, I can, I can be sure that you can be sure that the city will be bustling, and um, that was something I really liked. That sort of separation from the business of the city, because I lived in the city in my entire life. The business of the city from the purely academic study and the detachment from it. Okay, it's, you really paint a very beautiful picture. <laughs> So, you know, like last question that I want to ask is, what is that one advice that you would give to students, you know, who are planning to pursue law or masters at the university? Neha, would you like to share your thoughts on it? Yeah, thank you, Shrinkla. Um, so I would just say, um, prepare in advance because personally for me, I, I started a bit late. Uh, because of which for me the whole process was a bit uh, it, it got a bit hurried in the end so I just say uh, prepare a bit in advance do your research do your research completely like uh, on the basis of what kind of university on the basis of universities and courses and and your areas of interest and what just do your research and uh, just just go for it go for it because um, it's 
I mean, it's it's completely worth it, is what I'd say. It's completely worth it. So yeah, just prepare in advance and 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 research and and just uh, uh, just be excited and and go for it. Yeah, that's all. Mm-hmm. Um, Aaron, would you like to add to? It? Yeah. Um. I would say for me the the thing that that really helped me was I have to say be be engaged into everything that you do. I mean for example with the with the number of extracurricular things that you have and all the things that you have a lot of distractions in the in the place. But I think it's very important to focus on the work that you're doing and to put your 100% into it and take advantage of the different different opportunities that come to you. There are sometimes and there I can count on my fingers the number of times that you know yeah, I might have regretted something. Oh, I sh- I wish I did that. I wish I did that. Don't let that happen to you. Take advantage of every single step you take because in a in in no time your university experience is done. I'm at the finish line or near the finish line now. And when I look back, I'm like, oh, I feel like I just came here. So that happens a lot. So take advantage of every single minute you get with your professors, with your uh, with create a rapport with the staff, create a rapport with students. The fact is the students that you meet here are going to be the industry leaders. They're going to be the ones at the top of the field. So create that rapport with the students, talk to different sorts of people, understand different things. And so take advantage. So Mirat, you're a second year student, so you'll also be able to know your experience is very fresh. So yeah, would you like to guide? Yeah, basically like... uh... Like, uh, like uh, when I like I was like I was having the dropout tag. So there was some advice that I was like trying to find in some like like as we are having this webinar. So all I want to say right now to all my fellow mates is that if you are still unsure whether University of Birmingham is going to be a fantastic idea or whether you should be looking for some other university in Birmingham, so don't ever look around. Uh, as start writing your motivation letters for University of Birmingham and. Uh, don't ever underestimate that whether you are scoring well or have you haven't scored much well. The universities like uh, selection criteria is totally different. So just give your best shot. And if you are ready to risk everything just like me, then just do it. And you will discover that it was one of the best decisions you ever made. And all I can say in like, in, if I have to sum up everything, all I say, I will say is that the quality of education at, at this prestigious university is not expensive. It's priceless. Wow, that's a very nice way to put it. So we have a few questions from the attendees. I think uh, Ben will be able to answer these. So the first question is, what basically are the steps to get into the Birmingham internship program as a law student? Yep, so I can I can certainly add a bit of insight into this. Um, so the, in, uh, the internship program really fits around our Kepler and Centre for Professional Education offering. Um, So it's opportunities that all students in Birmingham have to gain work experience of all varying levels and uh, and types as well. Um, So there's there's different entry requirements depending on the different programmes you're going into. Usually we we ask that students um, put in a formal application that will be supported by your personal tutor uh, or by some of the the team within Kepler themselves. So there's there's loads of opportunities depending on what students are interested in. Um, A a good example is is I think last year or potentially the year before, uh, we had over 500 hours of work experience for Birmingham University students. So you're not competing with other universities or other students across the UK. That's only for students at, at Birmingham. So it's a really great opportunity to make sure that you can get those sort of experiences and opportunities while you're studying here Uh, and realistically if a student is really keen on getting some work experience there's a very good opportunity and it's very likely they'll be able to get it when when they're studying with us okay wow and uh, so someone has asked this question what are the steps that one should take to get into the university of birmingham yeah, absolutely. So I can cover this as, as well briefly. Um, so depending on which level of study you're interested in, if it's undergraduate uh, study, you, you would apply to us through through UCAS, uh, which is the university uh, university's uh, application system. It's, it's quite a, a straightforward program. As, as Samrat said, you prepare a statement of purpose or a, a personal statement for that, which kind of explains your motivation for, for studying with, with Birmingham. Uh, and then you, you su- submit some references as well, um, who can speak to your kind of previous academic um, ability. Uh, and then that gets sent through to us and we review it in line with our entry requirements. Um, we have all our entry requirements online. We actually have a, a, a law school page specifically for 
applicants from India, uh, where you can actually see a, an excellent video that Aaron's been a part of uh, as he guides students through that process as well. Uh, and I believe that's been shared by, by Law Sicko previously, and I'll, I'll post the link in the, in the chat as well. Um, but it's a very simple process for UCAS. There's loads of information on our website as well. In terms of postgraduate, we, we ask that students apply directly through the, through the university website. Again, quite a simple process with a statement of purpose and references, uh, and, you, and you share your, your current academic experience with us as well. It's all kind of quite a, a straightforward process, um, but what I will do is I will just share um, our email addresses uh, on the screen now, which is directly comes through to me. Um, so if there's any questions around this, um, please do feel free to, to drop us an email. I'm very happy to chat individually with students, uh, also to, to answer, answer any questions that come up as well. We try and make it as, as simple as possible uh, to work through, um, but the best place to, to go is really our, our website because it does it step by step and, and kind of uh, makes it really easy for anybody to apply. Okay, so anyone who's thinking of applying, you know where to, whom to ask and where to log in. You should definitely visit the website. Absolutely. So we are at the end of our webinar. Anyone else who has any questions, you can just post on the chat and we will, you know, we'll ask. Uh, anyone else wants to add anything? Ben, would you like to add anything? Um, the only thing I'd just like to say is just to thank our panel so much for, for sharing their, their experience with us. Uh, it's always fantastic to hear that, um, it, that Birmingham does often deliver the promises we make. <laughs> it's always great to know that students do have a, have a great experience here. Um, and as kind of Neha shown as well, um, we do try and continually build these links with our alumni. We are really interested and really passionate about where our students go uh, and where they end up. Uh, and it's something we're, we're constantly trying to develop. So um, we, we actually have some more sessions coming up with, with LOSICO as well in a couple of weeks. Uh, so I think our next session will be on why you might consider a, an LLM in Birmingham and in the UK versus, versus elsewhere. Um, and then finally, I think at the end of February, we've got a session on qualifying as a solicitor or barrister after you graduate from Birmingham as well. Uh, and they're both with our, with our academics, our program director uh, for the LLM and also our director of careers and employability, uh, Mr. Paul McConnell as well. So we've got some really great sessions coming up and looking forward to, to working on those as well. Okay. Uh, we have uh, another question on the internship program. Uh, how is the university going to select students for an internship program? Yeah, I... So I, I can answer that one. Uh, Fairly, fairly quickly. It will depend on the internship. Um, so there will be different selection processes. Uh, sometimes you'll be selected internally by the law school. So you'll put in an application and then it will be reviewed by uh, a team of academics and, and, and staff at the law school. Other, otherwise, uh, we send the applications off to uh, the companies and the law firms that are, that are holding the internship and they will go through the application process uh, and, and often potentially interview or, or speak to you and decide who they want to employ as well. Um, I think the key thing to, to make people aware of, though, is it's, it, it may sound scary, uh, but it's not scary at all. Uh, as, as has been said, our academic staff are incredibly friendly, and incredibly welcoming, and they're really happy to read through applications and give advice and pointers and share their own experiences as well. So although the application might sound a bit, a bit scary, it's definitely uh, not worth worrying about too much. Okay. So there are a lot of people who will be there to support you if you wish to go there. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, we have another question. Uh, she is currently doing LLM from NUJS. I have applied for international trade law in Birmingham University. What is the next step? Fantastic. Uh, it's wonderful to hear that you, you've applied for international trade law. So, so what will happen now is we will probably have your application it will be in our, in our bank of applications to process. Um, you've, you've applied at an interesting time because actually our, UK, our undergraduate deadline was just on Friday, just gone. So we've had a whole wave of last minute applications from the undergraduate programs which we need to process. So at the moment, they might be just stuck in a little, a little pile of applications that we're still to look through. Um, but we will try and return a decision within about two weeks of receiving your application. Um, if it's been longer than that already, it's probably worth just dropping me an email on the, on the email address on there, and I, I can look into that and find out where, where the application is. But the next step will be that it will be reviewed uh, internally by the law school, and then we will be able to turn around the decision on whether we can make you an offer, whether that's an unconditional offer, whether there's certain things you still need to meet, um, and, and we do that quite quickly. 
After that, um, you get the chance to accept your offer with us. And then we invite you to a whole load of exciting events uh, in the coming months about being an offer holder and, and what the next steps are uh, for joining us. So it's, it's at the start of a very exciting process. Okay. I hope we cleared your doubt, Anuja. Uh, also, are there any short-term courses for students who are already pursuing LLB? So we have an LLB for graduates program, which is a two-year version of our LLB uh, program. So that might be of interest there, but if you're already doing an LLB, it's probably not the sort of thing you're looking for. Um, so we don't have any kind of short, shorter than a year courses. Obviously, the, the postgraduate course is, is a year in length. So that's our the shortest one we offer uh, at this time. The LLB for graduates is for students who've done a different degree in a different discipline and want to get qualified in the UK. Um, so I think there's probably not a shorter version of that at this at this time, um, but we are looking at potentially doing some short courses uh, on specific niche subjects in law as well, but we don't have any information on that at the moment. Okay. So I think we are at the end of the webinar now. Uh, I, I view this webinar has really helped people who've been you know, thinking or who are in doubt where to apply, what to do after LLB, how, where to pursue LLB from. So thank you so much. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Sumedat. And thank you, Neha. Thank you so much for being here today. You know, you really helped a lot of students here. Thank you for hosting as well, Carla. It's been, been a really great session. And thanks to our panel. Thank you so much for having me. It was it was wonderful. I expected it to be just as fun and insightful as it was. Thanks a lot for having us. Yeah, I hope um, all the students who've seen this can actually understand a little bit more. I welcome them to connect with me on their share time. I would also like to just add and like to thank all the panel members to like have me on board and all to uh, just one last message to all the students is that just don't hesitate to ask if you have any questions to any of like on the email addresses that we are sharing because if you will not ask you will never know and plus i was also among all of you and uh, right now if i say like i if i observe and join the dots and the maximum responses that i got was from ben so today i'm like really happy that uh, like few years ago i was like emailing him and like asking for suggestions and now today i am part of his panel and guiding you all so for me it was a like great opportunity so i just uh, just just want to say that just don't hesitate just ask you never know because life is so unpredictable wonderful what a way to finish <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. thank you thank you so much thank you, thank you. Bye.